Um, just in terms of the hospital car park, the new car park that goes there provides how many car parks? Um, we're not sure of a okay, final number a yet. CDHB. We're working closely with them, and that's part of the analysis we've done here and some of these changes is to enable them to get good access to the replacement mm. building. It's quite likely that where the, pr the, ex the previous access was wholly off of that Antigua Street, um, these proposals would lend themselves at least to a second access from St Asaph Street, which works better with the traffic network. Okay. Not instead of, but probably as well as. Thank you. Any other questions on Durham, Cambridge? Glenn. Oh, no, you missed your chance on that. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Sorry, should have got it before. I mentioned it. Just so. minor, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Still of some significance. Uh, the Presbyterian Church sold land there to Sarah. I think uh, there was an undertaking given that the stone cairn as a memorial to the... Uh, or commemorating that site, uh, you know, by the deans and others would be kept. Is that... Still the case? That's corner of uh, Oxford and Antigua. Um, the proposals before council this afternoon um, include the widening of Chewham Street at that location. And so, as I understand it, negotiations are taking place between CDHB and CIRA over the use of that land. So, um, if that is an undertaking within that, then that would be as much affected, I think, by the outpatients um, facility as, as our road works. Um, I think we probably have to get back to you. So this is between room. Sarah and the Presbyterian Church. It's not really our doing. You mean the St Andrew's site? Is that where yes. you? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. That that's that that very much is a. Uh, a conversation between Sarah and CDHB. And you've heard that, Angus? I just, just, what, just what Brendan said there was that um, our roadworks actually affect that, that issue. Um, so it's, it's been more around that CDHB de development that affects the, 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 the monument or whatever. The, yeah, yeah the, you, you mean the, 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 the monument? The, the key. The thistle. Yeah. yeah. So it's between. Who are you saying? CDHB and 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 Sarah and Sarah. Okay. Um, and um, I, come, on, come forward. As, as I understand <laughs> it, the, C, the CDHB proposals for an outpatients in that area will will be the the, the issue to be accommodated yeah. there. So just to clarity. My understanding is the cairn's located on the northern part of that triangular site, and that currently isn't affected by the schemes that are in front of you and neither is it affected by the negotiations between CIRA and uh, the Ministry of Health and CDHB for the purchase of the land for the superstop. So it isn't affected by any of these schemes. So we can say it will stay. Yep. So, so in terms of the plans before you, it's, it's, it stays and it's between okay. between the Ministry of Health, CDHB and uh, the previous owners. Okay. Yeah. So done your duty now? I've, I've done my duty. I, I think it's a significant heritage item. <laughs> right. Anything else on Durham, Cambridge? Yanni? When are we going to um, make decisions about Oxford Terrace? Because it does seem weird that we've got a whole intersection that is just said... Well, just, minute, just ask the question. So Oxford Terrace, when's that coming? Um, the, the, the proposals before Council this afternoon include the intersections of Oxford Terrace with Hagley Avenue and Rickerton Ave there, and also a, a, a small roundabout proposal at the top of the end of Antigua Street. The reason for that is to accommodate the... The, the traffic movements on Oxford Terrace, as well as the potential future outpatients facility that people could pick someone up from outpatients, do a U-turn there, and basically it serves all the moves there. That bit of Oxford Terrace between those two points is a matter that CIRA are looking at as part of the Avon River Precinct proposals. Again, um, those would be in consultation with council and CDHB, they're not part of the proposals this afternoon. So, but we own the road, we're the road controlling authority, so why is Sarah doing it as part of the Avon River Precinct? Because it's not in the map that we've given them. Do you want to come to forward, do. Angus? Just maybe stay there. <laughs> so how come you get a road as part of Avon that's River a good, Precinct? That's a good question. So actually, <laughs> on the original blueprint, that, that, that road was kind of 
It's kind of greyed out a, a, a wee bit. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's been left. Now, part of the reason why it's been left out of these plans is we see that actually that presents a huge opportunity to link the two sites of the hospital, the new proposed outpatients in the triangle part and the main hospital site. And so we were waiting until the CDHB were in a position to really inform the design of that before we integrate. And I say we, it's the full and accessible <laughs> city team, which is a, a joint collaborative team between council and CIRA. Um, so it's not, we're just leading the discussions, if you like. It's, we, we understand fully it's your road and it will remain your road. And the traffic resolutions for any changes will come before you in due course. But it's not today. But it's so not we today. No. Well, is it closed? It's not closed and it's not proposed to be closed. And um, as soon as we have a design, a grade, a concept design to grade, we'll, we'll obviously bring it before you. Thanks, Angus. So, sorry, say again. So, so the functional requirements for that role, just in terms of where we've started for in design brief, it just has to support um, legibility and connectivity with the existing network. So the, in terms of whether it's two-way or one-way, we haven't made decisions on that. It certainly won't be close to vehicular traffic. In my mind, that it lends itself very well to a drop-off location for the hospital and hospital activities, and we'll, we'll certainly be taking that approach in our discussions. Through these these changes, um, without. But you'll no be acutely aware of that. So I mean, particularly people with disabilities or um, people that you know may have injuries that want to park close. I, I can't see any way in which we have accessibility for the memorial. How do they get there? So the present way, if you want to get vehicle activity, uh, or vehicle access to the earthquake memorial, um, from the west, you would head down Tuam Street, you would turn left up um, Durham Street on the new section of one-way traffic, and then left into Oxford Terrace, and there'll be provisions for disability, disability parking. That's my understanding of all the designs have been finalised. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions on Durham, Cambridge? If not, I'm taking that as okay, unless somebody's got amendments that they want to tell us about. <laughs> nope. Okay, so Manchester Street. Moving on to Manchester Turning Street. On. You want to outline where you've gotten to latterly? Yes. <laughs> without, um, without maybe quite so much on the history of it, because I think... Right. We're so um, the key submissions made on the Manchester Street proposals were... Um, some concerns from central city businesses and developments about proposals in the draft plans to prohibit southbound right turns into Armagh Street, Cashel Street and High Street. So there were some significant concerns there raised by central city developers over that. Um, and so um, the reason for those changes being proposed in the first place were to maintain bus priority through the corridor. Um, subsequent detailed design work around the functionality of the corridor have actually led the design team to consider those submissions. And so before council this afternoon, we are proposing that those existing available right turns into Armagh Street and into Cashel Street will be retained as they were previously, so submitters have been informed about that proposal. We're proposing that High Street connection with Manchester Street would still remain left in, le left out, as we were proposing it, uh, because that actually, um, you've got that very important right turn immediately south of there from Manchester Street into Litchfield Street, which gives vehicles access to the parking buildings there, and also the important bus right turn into the new northern access to the uh, to the interchange. So it's just really too close to Litchfield Street for in order for us to have a second right turn into High. So those were the primary submissions on Manchester Street, um, apart from the issue of the northbound bus superstop located between Hereford Street and Worcester Street, which has been the subject of the discussions and presentation at ITE committee last Thursday. Submitters um, uh, came before committee over that and in fact was the subject of uh, section 339, local government act hearing over the shelter proposals themselves which was considered by the panel chaired by uh, Councillor Goff on the 11th of August, which found against four optional designs for the shelter structures themselves at that location. 
So, Madam Chair, um, turning to uh, that matter then, uh, in, in the committee's recommendations to council today of last uh, Thursday, um, committee asked us to come back to council and to inform you about the alternatives for staggering the super stop in the opposite direction. So I just wonder if we could have those slides up now, please. Thank you. Um, so what we briefed committee on last week and which is attachment 10 to the um, committee papers today was um, optional assessments that were undertaken into where we located a super stop on Manchester Street. Um, we haven't actually got a big search area to find a suitable location for a bus super stop on that corridor. Um, the core services come out of the interchange, they turn left up Manchester Street and two of the core routes, that's the yellow and the orange line, then travel out to the east and northeast via Gloucester. And so any super stop located north of Gloucester Street would fail to service two important core frequent bus service routes. Similarly, locating a super stop anywhere south of Hereford Street would be of limited value given that you are getting very close then to the interchange. The general objective has been to try and get a decent bus stop in the middle of Manchester Street within sort of 500 metre intervals of one another. So the search has focused on the section of corridor between Gloucester and Hereford Streets. Um, I think there was a question. No, I'll, you finish and right. then I'll let Phil have a go. And then, um, um, so questions. committee last week asked us to, we're, the proposal before council today is to stagger the super stop and again attachment 10 goes through other alignment and arrays for the delivery of the stop facility, having both of the stops opposite one another on a block um, at various locations. A mid-corridor island arrangement, which was suggested quite early on and was re-suggested again at committee last week, which we've also looked at. But the primary um, uh, recommendation from committee last week is that we should brief council this afternoon on the stagger arrangement which the proposals contain, which is for the northbound super stop to be on the block between Worcester and Hereford Street, which places it outside the, the, the buildings that have attracted the submissions and objections to that. So that is Trinity Church, the replaced Shands Emporium on that site, and other commercial developments likely to take place between Mexico Restaurant and the Trinity Church. And the southbound stop being on the opposite side of the street, on the other side of Worcester Street. So we have proposed staggering it that way, and committee asked us to go through the pros and cons of staggering that way versus the opposite way. So the, the proposal um, and the advantages, which we've generally shown in green, uh, uh, are there on the slide that members have before them now. So this is a sketch form of the main scheme proposals that have, we have before you. And so there is no one binary issue in this. There is no one issue that says that single matter says it has to be there or it has to be in the opposite direction. Most of this analysis is a combination of factors and we've looked at the balance of advantage and disadvantage with each scheme. So in our view, the key advantages of the proposal as we're showing them are summarised on that slide before you there. The chief disadvantage of it, as is shown in number eight at the base there, is that the proposal as existed placed the stops and the shelter outside of those sensitive heritage buildings. So the alternative, which is slide number two, is as we were asked, effectively then puts the northbound stop north of Worcester Street and the southbound stop then 
conversely switches to opposite those heritage buildings and on the, on the eastern side of the block between um, Worcester and Hereford Street. Uh, and again, so if you look at the, the diagram there, right hand side south, left hand side is north. Um, again, as I stressed earlier, there is no one single issue that says you cannot do this. Um, however, there are a combination of factors there that we believe deliver a suboptimal solution to the proposal you have before you this afternoon. Those are the highlights of some of our concerns about the alternative option there. Some of them are about streetscape and the planting of street trees and the achievement of the pleasant urban environment. Some of them are more about safety, road safety issues and the, the functionality and the operation of the corridor. Um, I, I think the chief issues in road safety terms, which we've been conscious of and nervous about, is that staggering it in that arrangement means that you have a wider corridor to cross over Manchester Street compared with the preferred option, particularly there south of Worcester. And so the proposal before council today contains a proposal for Barnes Dance, countdown crossing there, much like that outside the interchange. Um, the extra width crossed there for the slower pedestrian that takes about over a, a second per metre extra to cross for slower pedestrians crossing would add time into a Barnes Dance at that location. It begins to mitigate against bus efficiency. Not a a huge issue in its own right, but it is a factor. Other factors there are would be if we place the super stop on the western side of the corridor between Worcester Boulevard, Worcester Street and Gloucester Street, we are concerned that there is an existing formed vehicle access there, which may be used by a future development to access the site there. There is a scheme board on site at the moment for a development there. We understand there may be a proposal for a second vehicular access on that block to premises there. These are pertinent matters for any section 339 hearing. That's mainly about access to premises. Our worry in road safety terms there is if we have a one or more vehicular accesses located at the same location as a super stop that you would have vehicles turning in and out amongst buses at, on the bays at that location and in some shape or form they would be bisecting the footpath where pedestrians are actually waiting, travelling on the footpath and waiting for buses there. The other issue with that is, is because two of the core services turn right onto Gloucester, we have to be conscious of the fact that we don't want the bus stop too far north on that block and too far close to Gloucester Street because they've got to get out of the bus stop and then swing a right turn into Gloucester Street there. So I was trying to think earlier about a comparable example of what that might look like. Um, we have a right turn now for buses from Colombo Street into Chewham Street to access the new interchange. All the north-south blocks are about 100 metres everywhere in the city. So the equivalency there would be um, a three-bay three bus stop on Colombo Street immediately south of Chewham Street, where buses are pulling in there and then would be coming through to the signals almost immediately in front of them and then making a right turn into Chewham Street. It's quite a demanding move for drivers to undertake. In safety terms, our answer to that would be we would have to rephase the bus and traffic movements there. Every time we introduce an extra phase, as I think is shown on the diagram there, you get a further loss of bus efficiency on the corridor. So, to try and sum up all of that, um, councillors. Um, if we could go back to the previous one, please. Um, to try and sum up all of that, um, 
I, I've spent 20 years being a road safety engineer and a safety auditor, and I've been out to the scenes of road crashes and accidents after they've, uh, they've happened. And we do forensic analysis of what led to the accident. In, in all my career, I've never found an accident that had one single cause. It was a combination of driver speed, inattention, someone running in the road, um, in a whole combination of circumstances. And what you try and do when you try and overcome it is to reduce the level of human error. Everyone makes mistakes using the roads, whether they're a driver, a pedestrian, or whatever. Everything we try and do with highway design, and that is the case with the Manchester Street proposals before you today, is to try and achieve simplicity. What Manchester Street does is achieves absolute consistency. There is a single centre line all the way down that corridor. So when you cross the road as a pedestrian, you get a very good idea of where a vehicle is coming from, and you're not seeing any late swings and manoeuvres towards you. And so there's, there's simplicity in that. My worry with the alternative that you see before you here is, as I've said, not one of those factors is a single binary issue that says we cannot do it. What I worry about there is that we have seven or eight factors that, in our view, mitigate against that being the preferred outcome for the location and the arrangement of the superstop there. So, um, to come to the third and final slide, I promise there's only one more. So, um, We are very conscious and we were very concerned that when we came to committee last week, we hadn't done enough. We hadn't done enough to satisfy the concerns about the heritage buildings on Manchester Street. And um, we listened to what the submitters said and we listened to the passion of those submissions. And we've gone away to try and come up with some way of addressing their concerns. Um, when we briefed committee on this last week, what we were planning for was both of these super stops to, lead, to work on a simple lead stop arrangement. In other words, the buses come into the stop, they roll through to the front stop, and then they, they all come in behind it. Um, what we then looked at was, could we come up with a smart stop solution? So we actually looked at the way the new interchange is working. So when a bus comes into the new interchange on Chewham Street, it gets detected by loops there, and they actually direct a driver into a stand in the new interchange. And we thought, well, why can't we do that here? Why can't we actually reduce the number of buses going into that northern bay? And so if I could then, Claire or someone, could you click the slide, please? Oh. No, the, it should have been animated. But anyway, never mind. Right, thank you. Right, OK. <laughs> all right, well, I'll, I'll talk through the all in one. Um, the idea is we would detect buses coming up Manchester Street in a similar arrangement to what we've put in at the interchange. So as a bus comes somewhere near Hereford Street, it gets detected. Um, instead of directing it to the northern Blue Bay there, and our thanks to um, Ms Smetham, who actually produced this long section, is one of the submission plans last week, um, we, we thought, well, how about if we actually made the middle stop the lead one? So we actually direct the majority of buses into the yellow stand, the middle one there, and then any second bus comes along gets directed into the southern stand, which is the red one there, and the third one, the northern one, is the least used of the three. Now, our analysis of bus frequencies and passengers and so on there suggests to us that we would, for 98% of the time, we'll never get more than two buses in a platoon coming out of the interchange, coming around the corner. This is the first stop after the interchange. So for 98% of the time, we're not expecting more than two buses pitching up there. Um, over the period of a peak hour, it might be ten, six minutes within a peak hour, 10% of the time that the third bay would be occupied. So our proposal here is to introduce a smart stop where, whereby the majority of buses first get directed into the yellow bay in the middle, 
secondly to the southern bay, thirdly to the northern bay. So what that does is it reduces the pressure on the northern bay outside the relocated Chans Emporium, well clear of Trinity Church, and therefore as a consequence reduces the need for the passenger shelter, um, which is, is East Cairns' concern, is that passengers should have shelter up to the door of the primary buses they're using. So what we're effectively doing here is we're lifting the doors of the buses south from where they otherwise would have been. Not for all of the time, but for the vast majority of the time. So we believe this is a smart solution to it. It uses a bit of technology, but actually even if the technology wasn't working, the driver orders could be you will go to the middle stop first, you will then occupy the southern stop, then you will only finally occupy the third stop if the other two are full, which is a small proportion of the time. So if we could just click it once more, the slide. So in pure traffic terms, what that means is that it reduces the need for the shelter facility outside the sensitive environment immediately in front of Shan's Emporium. No. Um, I <laughs> but um, so I've, we've, ju we've just merely done this to illustrate, and, and the, 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 the hearings panel already concluded that a shelter of that kind will not exist there, it will not be placed there, and any design would be in consultation with the frontage owners there. What we are simply showing there, f using Myths Smethen's long section there, is how this solution might significantly reduce the impact of not only the shelters, but stationary buses in front of that building. There's one other tiny point with it, and that is in the resolutions, we were planning to use what would have been the least used southern stop for a part-time loading and servicing bay there, i.e. up to 7.30 in the morning, after 7 p.m. at night, could have been available to frontage premises and so on. We understand through our colleagues at CIRA that um, the trust, the Heritage Trust, would have liked a servicing bay somewhere outside the, the, the Shands Emporium and the church towards the northern end. If we make the northern bay the least used of the three, that resolution could deliver them a quieter hours, out of hours servicing facility there, which would not only serve them, it would serve all the premises on that block, but would actually give them the access they need, given that we understand they're still looking at what purpose, what, how they would purpose that building. Thank you. So potentially in number three, there might be no shelter? It, I, I, I think probably that's a point where I would probably hand over to um, Brendan Smythe to give you some advice on how that might affect the heritage buildings. 